Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, good news for home and business owners who need repairs from winter storm damage. Good evening, I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. Home and business owners who suffered damage from the severe storms of March 3rd through the 14th have some help on the way. The U.S. Small Business Administration is now offering assistance throughout the tri-state. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele has the story. Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia businesses and residents affected by the severe storms, heavy snow, and record low temperatures during March can now apply for low interest disaster loans through the U.S. Small Business Administration. We have declared a disaster for uh, Mingo County, West Virginia, and under the Small Business Administration guidelines, any county adjacent to Mingo County, including uh, Martin and Pike here in Kentucky, Buchanan down in Virginia, are eligible to apply. The Small Business Administration made the loans available in response to a letter from West Virginia Governor Earl Ray Tomlin requesting a disaster declaration by the SBA. The loans are offered to businesses, homeowners, and renters. We're offering homeowners loans with interest rates as low as 1.8% for up to 30 years. The uh, maximum amount for a homeowner is $200,000 for the real estate and up to $40,000 for personal property to cover up to 100% of their uninsured disaster related losses. This would include things like carports or driveways or automobiles. Businesses also can apply for the loans and they can borrow up to $2 million. The interest rates are as low as 4% for businesses. SBA's customer service representatives are available at the Disaster Loan Outreach Center to answer questions and help individuals complete applications. SBA has a temporary office in Williamson, West Virginia. We're located at the Community Services Building on Alderson Street. Uh, we're going to be there from 8 to 5 on weekdays. This Saturday we're going to be there uh, from 10 to 2. Now we will be closed, that's a temporary center, so it's going to close next Thursday, the 18th, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If you are unable to make the drive to Williamson, you can apply online or over the phone by using the information on the screen. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. Although SBA consumer service reps will leave the area on June 18th, you can still apply for a loan online or by phone until August 3rd. What began last night as a typical shoplifting incident quickly became an arrest for armed robbery. According to a police report, Walmart manager Benjamin Wagner allegedly observed 23-year-old Destiny H. Guzlin of Pikeville concealing merchandise on her person and then confronted her when she left the store. At first, Guzlin allegedly turned over the merchandise, then grabbed it, pushed Wagner, and attempted to run. Wagner grabbed the merchandise back and ran inside the store with Guzlin allegedly chasing, grabbing, and hitting him. She also allegedly injured him with a box cutter and bit him. When police arrived and placed Guzlin in custody, they allegedly found a syringe in her possession. She was charged with first-degree robbery, second-degree assault, and possession of drug paraphernalia. She's being held in the Pike County Detention Center. A Robinson Creek man is in jail on a charge of first-degree drug trafficking. According to his arrest warrant, 57-year-old Damron Maggard allegedly sold oxycodone tablets June 5th to a witness cooperating with Kentucky State Police. The warrant further notes the transaction was captured on audio and video. Maggard was arrested yesterday afternoon in Pikeville. He's being held in the Pike County Detention Center. State Auditor Adam Edelin and the Kentucky Association of Sexual Assault Programs are planning a series of meetings across Kentucky as part of an investigation into the number of untested sexual assault exam kits in police departments throughout the state. In order to recommend reforms in how such evidence is collected and handled, Edelin says he wants to meet with victims, medical professionals, law enforcement, and others who are involved in sexual assault investigations. The meetings will begin June 23rd. 14 meetings are scheduled over the next 30 days. On July 14th, meetings are scheduled in Prestonsburg and Hazard. Five environmental and citizens groups have again sent notice to Fraser Creek Mining of their intent to sue the company for violations of the Federal Clean Water Act. 
Appalachian Voices, Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, Kentucky Riverkeeper, Waterkeeper Alliance, and the Sierra Club delivered their intent to sue to the company Wednesday. It's their fourth such action in the last five years. In the previous action, filed back in November, the groups accused the company of falsifying water discharge reports by simply copying previous reports. The company has since corrected those issues, but now the groups say reports are again being falsified. According to a statement from the groups, raw laboratory data indicates that discharge violations occurred, but the reports don't match the data. The violations allegedly occurred in Floyd, Pike, McGoffin, and Perry counties. Fraser Creek now has 60 days to respond or correct the alleged violations before the group can follow through with a lawsuit. Coming up, there could be a spot for you on a statewide health board and Pikeville's getting ready for its first major concert in the Riverville Arena. We'll be back in two minutes. This weekend, downtown Pikeville will feature no shortage of activity. Muscle on Main kicks off tomorrow night, followed by a full day of music on Saturday, topped off by the Marshall Tucker Band in the Riverville Arena Saturday night. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins has all the details. This weekend, downtown Pikeville will be full of events from food to classic cars to live music in the Riverfield. In addition to the regular Muscle on Main festivities starting on Friday, the first ever concert will be held at the Riverfield Arena. On Saturday, the crowds will start on Main Street and then move towards the Riverfield for the Marshall Tucker Band. East Kentucky Expo Center General Manager Cindy Collins told us that unlike most Expo Center shows, people will be able to come and go from the outdoor arena throughout the day. For $25, that's where the tickets start. They can get a wristband and come in, watch some of the music, watch Luna and Dave, and then decide that they want to go out and see the car shows for a while or the kids are want to walk around, go do some of those things, and then come back. You can come in and out with those, so I'm excited about it. But even though the concert will be in the Riverfill and not technically inside the Expo Center, Colin said tickets will still have to be purchased at the Expo Center box office. Ticket sales do, for technical reasons, have to happen up here. So come to the Expo and get your wristband and get your ticket, and then you're free to move around all day. The $25 ticket is good for all bands playing in the Riverfill Arena, including the Marshall Tucker Band, scheduled to take the stage at 8 p.m. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. If you have an interest in public health policy, the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky might have a seat for you. Since its formation in 2001, the Foundation has invested $22 million in grants to improve access to health care, reduce risks, and promote healthy lifestyles, as well as promoting health equity and reduce health disparities. Now the group has four spots open on its board of directors, including the Region 7 seat, which covers much of eastern Kentucky. An at-large seat is also open. The group is also seeking nine members for a community advisory council. To nominate yourself or someone else, request a form through the contact on your screen. Fill it out and submit it to the foundation. The deadline to make a nomination is July 24th. House Speaker Greg Stumbo, House Majority Leader Rocky Atkins, House Speaker Pro Tem Jody Richards, and House Majority Whip Johnny Bell traveled to Washington yesterday. They discussed a couple of high-profile road projects for Eastern Kentucky. The group met with Congressman Hal Rogers, Senator Rand Paul, and House Speaker John Boehner to discuss Stumbo's proposal to extend the Mountain Parkway from Prestonsburg to Beckley, West Virginia. They also talked about a separate proposal to bring the Hal Rogers Parkway up to interstate standards and extend it southeast into Tennessee. Afterwards, Stumbo characterized the meetings as positive, saying support for the projects is growing in Washington. Speaking of the Mountain Parkway, travelers along that highway might see some delays next week. Construction crews will begin demolishing the Gifford Road Bridge. It's five miles west of Salyersville. Demolition will begin Tuesday and is expected to take three days. During that time, officials say there will be delays lasting no more than 20 minutes. Later, the overpass will be replaced as part of a new interchange being constructed at the site. 
Coming up, Andrew Joyce will be in to tell us about a football camp at Pike Central. But first, we'll check with EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins and see what that muggy meter has in store for us. We'll be back in two minutes. Now, Lathan, what's the official true day, first day of summer by the calendar? It's still about a week and a half away on the 21st. No Hard way, to man. believe we did hit 90 here at the station in Pikeville. National Weather Service, oh, so close. That's but summer. Not so much. We'll talk more about that here in just a second. Some of us picking up a few light rain showers, though, and that is just across the border in southwest Virginia from Buchanan County over to Dickinson County. We will have to watch these very closely. It looks like they're starting to fizzle out, but you'll see those right through here and moving more to the north and to the west. So from Phelps down to Elkhorn City, you may get in on some cloud cover and maybe a quick shower before the evening is out. But again, once the sun sets, the showers, the thunderstorms will begin to dissipate across the region. It is that typical uh, summertime pattern where you get the heat, the humidity, and of course the terrain of the uh, Appalachian Mountains and there we see those showers popping up right along the highest elevations and then moving closer to the region. Pretty much that's all we have to talk about as far as any kind of precipitation is involved. A beautiful day. You see blue sky across downtown Pikeville. The current temperature, well that has been the story of the day. 89 degrees, feels like 91 with the humidity of 50 percent. The winds from the south at around three miles per hour. That heat index has been as high as the mid 90s a little bit earlier today and you might as well get used to that because that's going to stick around and I'll show you more here in just a second. Take a look at temperatures. Man oh man 93 in Williamson, 89 Pikeville, 90 in Prestonsburg, Paintsville, Inez, 89 in Salyersville and then the farther south you go temperatures are still in the mid to upper 80s. Officially at the National Weather Service office in Jackson, 88 degrees was the high today, two degrees shy of that record high of 90 that was set back in 1984. Overnight lows tonight dropping back into the mid and upper 60s and here we go again tomorrow. I think we'll see a little more in the way of cloud cover tomorrow. That may help keep temperatures down into the upper 80s, but you still see some of the computer forecasting models forecasting highs very close to us near 90 degrees, so it is definitely a possibility again during the day tomorrow. Cindy's favorite, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the muggy meter for tomorrow. We are still running in the uncomfortable category. Dew point still running very, very high. And as far as the UV forecast is concerned, it's running very high as well at a 9 out of a possible 11. Reduce your time outdoors between the hours of 10 and 4. And of course, if you have to be out working in this heat, plenty, plenty of water. All right, let's take a look at that pollen count. Sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza, and Pikeville. It's expected to stay pretty low over the next three days. As a matter of fact, in the moderate category, 6.0 on Friday, 5.7 Saturday, and 5.8 on Sunday. Seven day forecast time in that typical summertime pattern. I told you it was here to stay, and it is. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get the point. Each and every day, temperatures in the mid and upper 80s, overnight lows in the mid and upper 60s, and a daily threat of afternoon showers and storms. So it's pretty much a rinse and repeat kind of a forecast over the next seven days. I rest my case. Yeah. It's summer. Summer's here. That's what Might summer as well is. just go ahead and embrace it. And I don't hate the muggy meter. It's just she subjective. Does not like the muggy when meter. it's 90, I think it feels <laughs> wonderful outside. What do and you call it? And then you add the humidity to it, and it feels like 95 or 100. But do you call that oppressive? Uh, it's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? Uncomfortable. Teach you, that you'll agree. No, I like no. it. <laughs> Thanks, Lathan. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with sports in two minutes. Okay, I'm convinced that summer is here, and that yes. means camp season. Did you go to camp as a kid? Oh, every time I could. Okay, but I'm, you're not talking like uh, sleep in a tent. You're talking baseball camp for you. It was typically you. dorms and those type yeah. of things, but a lot of outdoor activities, and the season is underway. Mm -hmm. School's out, and the camp season has begun. Basketball camps, soccer camps, and football camps, teaching fundamentals and providing a fun experience in the games that kids love. 
The Pike County Central Hawks held their youth football camp for kids, ranging from kindergarten to eighth grade. The camp began on Monday and wrapped up yesterday evening. Michaela Colley had a chance to speak with Coach Sean Thacker. Yesterday evening, the Pike Central coaching staff held their final day of their youth football camp. So this is our, our fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and a lot of these kids play middle school. So basically what it's done is giving them a jump on running the same offense and stuff and learning our terminology and just make sure they have the basic fundamentals down, and, uh, especially with the, the younger kids, the fifth, sixth grade. We stress fundamentals of offense and, and defense and just learning our terminology and, and basically just having a good time with them so, they, so you know, they're not so scared of the big, bad football coach. These children came out to spread their talent and to grow as athletes. I'm hoping they take away that uh, this is a fun game. This group is, it, it surprised me. They're very talented. Uh, so I want to take away from it. <laughs> i got a pretty good future here if I can just win a few ball games. Uh, and these kids, I think they'll take away just the basic fundamentals of the game. Even though it's too early to tell, Coach Thacker believes his Hawks are looking promising for the fall. I, I think some people are going to be surprised about the product we put on the field. Uh, you know, we lost a lot of great kids. But on the bright side, I get, I get back my offensive line. Uh, I get back all five of them. They've been in the weight room all winter. We're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster. Uh, what, how will that carry over? I won't know for sure until August. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Michaela Cawley. Thanks, Michaela. It's not basketball season, but there's plenty of basketball action going on around the region. Belfry is hosting their annual team camp that began today and continues tomorrow. Eight local teams are participating. Belfry, Prestonsburg, Sheldon Clark, Pike Central, Phelps, Tug Valley, Logan, and Eastridge. Michaela Colley called up with camp director and Belfry head coach Mark Thompson. The Belfry Pirates are hosting a varsity and JV basketball team tournament that includes eight teams from around the area. We start at 11 every day and go to about 9 o'clock. Uh, so it is a full day of basketball. It is uh, today and tomorrow. So like I said, there's a lot of basketball being played. These teams act on this annual opportunity and use it to their advantage to grow. Well, it's something that we've been doing every year. Uh, it gets, gives us an opportunity to play on our floor. Uh, the local teams, you know, we get West Virginia teams and a lot of teams from the 15th region and uh, we just have a good day of basketball. These two days of scrimmages allow players to become familiar with one another and with the teams they will face in regular season play. Well, you know, we all want to improve and, and, and as much time as we can get on the floor, uh, you know, work on things and uh, it's, it's a little different in terms of regular season. We can, if, if coach needs to stop the game and, and want to go over something, we, we can do that. So it, it, gives, it gives coaches a, an opportunity to really do some coaching. You can see what teams are going to have next year and, and uh, kind of give you an insight of maybe who's, who's, who's that team to beat next year. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Michaela Colley. All games are played at Belfry High School. The Cincinnati Reds are back in action this evening in the first of a four-game series facing National League Central rival, the Chicago Cubs. Michael Lorenzen is on the mound for Cincinnati. The Cubs counter with Suoshi Wada. The Reds will be without shortstop Zach Cozart, who was injured yesterday after an awkward turn at first base. Cozart has been diagnosed with a torn tendon and ligaments in his right knee. He will need reconstructive surgery and is done for the year. First pitch, 8.05 with radio coverage on Hit City USA at 7.35. And the Golden State Warriors battle the Cavaliers as the NBA Finals continue tonight with Game 4 in Cleveland. The first two games went into overtime and Game 3 saw LeBron James go for 40 points and 12 rebounds. Let's not forget to mention Matthew Della Vadova's 20 points and being taken to the hospital to receive fluids from his excessive efforts in that Game 3 win. Cleveland owns a two-game to one advantage in the best of seven series. Complete radio coverage on ESPN Radio 95.9, 104.5, and 102.5 FM. I gotta say, if you run yourself out of fluids, you really worked hard in that game. He played so extremely hard and just left everything on the court. Went to the hospital, got fluids, and uh, he'll be back in action tonight. Literally left that sweat on the floor. You got it. Thanks so much. We'll be back in just a moment.
So again, a summery, summery day today, and it's going to keep on. And on and on and on and over on and the on. next seven days. A few showers out there tonight. Those will be moving in uh, from southwest Virginia into far southeastern Kentucky from Letcher to Pike County. And then we just keep that 30% chance of rain throughout the weekend. Temperatures each and every day in the mid and upper 80s. It's going to feel a little warmer than that with the humidity. But no washouts. No washouts. All right. No. We can deal with this yes. then. And we've got Sports Guys back tonight. We do. Sports Guys on the air at 7 tonight. You'll want to tune in. We've talked about a lot of different topics. You guys are interesting. Yes. That's going to do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can always get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. We're going to leave you tonight with nightfall over the Eastern Kentucky Mountains. Good night. Thanks for watching.